Hi everyone, welcome back to the law and I, Anastu, your host for Lake Me Jegere. Welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I will start by appreciating you for subscribing to this channel for your feedback, for your reviews. It means a lot to us. Thank you so very much. So, today's episode, I believe at the end of it, is going to educate you. Just sit put and make sure you watch this video to the end. Sometimes during the week, I posted on my status about marriage registries and the response I got was not so encouraging because a lot of people need more knowledge about this aspect of marriage so today's topic is what I have titled the do and don't of legal marriage many people believe that marriage is divided into three parts so we have the first marriage court marriage and the traditional marriage so allow me to laugh right now <laughs> no your classification is not actually right so according to nigeria law the marriage is being governed by what we call the marriage act and the marriage act has classified marriage into two parts number one marriage under the act which we normally known as the statutory marriage and the second one is marriage under the native law and custom so if among the people that will classify marriage into three groups that i earlier explained then kindly sit foot and make sure you watch this video to the end also note that no matter how valid the marriage is in the eyes of the couple the clergy the imam the society at large it must equally be valid before the law for it to be legal. So, statutory marriage can be defined as a union between one man and one woman for life with the exclusion of others. So, why under native law and custom is not restricted to a man and a woman? It extends to a man and more wives, or vice versa. And for statutory marriage, their rights, privileges accrue to the couple and also their children. As to their inheritance, they live beyond any form of traditional rules or custom. Okay, before I go ahead, I want to explain that the position of marriage registrars is that they are being appointed by the head of state. The head of state normally divides the state into different districts. Each district will be headed by a registrar. The registrars are always in the local government headquarters most times. So it's not like local government is conducting marriage. No, marriage registry is mostly located at local government. Thanks to a legal marriage, the first thing the intending couple will do is to go to the registry to notify the registrar about their intention to marry and the registrar will note it in the notice book and also a publication will be done. The publication is supposed to take a period of 21 days whereby people or anyone that has any grievance as to the reason why the marriage should not hold will come forward and lodge an objection so after 21 days if there is no objection at all then there will be a certificate that will be issued to the couple for them to go ahead to celebrate the marriage so this takes me to the next step. where are you going to celebrate this marriage number one you can celebrate the marriage or other registry after the 21 days Number two, so make sure that you're sure that where you want to celebrate your marriage is a licensed place of worship. Also note that it's not all churches or mosques that are licensed to conduct marriage ceremonies. 
So, be sure. If you are sure that your church is licensed to conduct a marriage ceremony, there is no reason why you should go to the registry again. In repetition, the same certificate that the registry will give you, the same thing the church will give you, as far as the church is licensed. Okay? There are legal things that must be in place for a marriage to also be valid. Number one is that the couples must be of age. They must be of age recognized to marry in the country. Number two is that they must not be related by blood. So you are not marrying your cousin or your distant cousin. It's illegal. Either of the couple must have been living in the district within the local government where the marriage is being conducted. Another thing that we also want to talk about is that ignorantly, you see some people, they will say that I don't want to do court wedding. That in court. Believing that the responsibility or the right or the privilege accrue to you when you do registry is different from when you do your marriage in a licensed place of worship. It's the same thing. It's the same right, it's the same privilege under the law. So it's not like one is being as far that the marriage was conducted in a licensed place of worship. Not that the marriage certificate must be signed by the two couples in the presence of at least two witnesses and also the clergy or the pastor or the registrar that has conducted the marriage ceremony. It's just like the normal contract, this is binding on the two parties. It's a one man, one woman. There is a presumption that your marriage is valid when you have such marriage certificates. The registrar always gives a licensed place of worship the book of certificates that is always in duplicate and counterfoil. So you should know the kind of certificate you have been given. And note it that when you misplace your certificate, you can as well apply for the CTC of your certificate. That is the certified through copy of your certificate. Another thing that we also want to talk about is the liability that is accrued to such marriage. You can be criminally liable for an offense of bigamy if you have a subsisting marriage and you go ahead to enter another one. But you're also criminally liable if you enter such marriage with false names. Okay? And also if there's any form of forgery whatsoever, you are criminally liable and you can be convicted for it. So, Mr. and Mrs., if you want to come together to acquire property or any form of asset, kindly note, there's nothing like Mr. and Mrs. Alabi, for example. There's nothing like that. Anybody can be Mrs. Alabi. You may end up not having any legal right on that property or asset. So if you want to acquire a property, the proper way for you to write your names is Mr. Tunde Alabi and Mrs. Funke Alabi. Use your name, write your name in full like that. That means you and your wife, you and your husband has equal rights in respect of this asset or property before the law. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you started from the beginning, you are not jumping, you finished through with this video. Kindly press the subscription button, share with your friends, and thank you for being part of this family. <laughs>